The new Expo SDK 52 was just released and is nothing but a joy to read through for every React Native developer. From new libraries to major improvements and groundbreaking changes, this release is the biggest release in Expo history. In this video, I will walk you through the most important updates with some code examples and demos so you quickly get a feeling for like all the new goodness. We will dive into specific selected topics in more depth in future videos as like there's just too much to cover for one video. If you're just getting started with React Native or want direct access to me, check out galaxies. Dev. Galaxies is the only online school 100% focused on React Native and personal support, so you will be able to build and ship Epic React Native apps in no time. And now, let's talk about SDK 52. Before we can talk about SDK 52, we actually have to mention that this includes React Native 0.76. This is a massive release in itself and we could do a whole video on it. I just want to highlight uh, the main things here. So the main thing is of course that the new architecture is now enabled by default for all new applications. You can see this in your app.json file. So somewhere here, if you start a new app, you're going to find new arc enabled. If you're just building a React Native app, you probably just benefit from this because this improves things under the hood. If you're a library author, you're going to have like another talk about it. But if you're really just using it, you will just have like improved speed, uh, faster connection to native stuff. Uh, again, we're going to talk about this in a later video. On top of that, there are a couple of other things included with this new release. Um, it is faster by default. So Metro is now faster. And there are two pretty practical things that are included as well, which are first of all that you can now use box shadow and filter so you can see right here I have a box with a beautiful box shadow and down here I'm applying a filter now if you're active watching you might notice that saturate and you are actually not applied so on iOS you can only use brightness and opacity the rest of the stuff works better on Android that is pretty rare case but anyway this is new and pretty awesome on top of that there is a completely new dev tools experience which you can launch by pressing j here uh, in your terminal and then you're going to be greeted by this screen if you've used expo and the debugging before it is pretty much the same so you get the console logs um, the network tab has moved to expo unstable i don't know if they change this in the future so here you can see your network request and you can of course also now set breakpoints this is pretty cool we're going to dive more into everything about the dev tools in a future video just for the moment know that there are new dev tools um, you can also inspect the components right here so pretty interesting stuff and you get all of this with react native 0.76 okay so now let's talk about new and updated libraries first of all we got expo video this is now stable went out of beta and the cool thing about this is that you can now play this you can also use it for thumbnails and you can actually have picture in picture as I have here on my device so this is actually not working uh, on the simulator so you got to test this on a real device the code for this is as well pretty easy if you go to my video here the, you've probably seen this before you can use pretty much a lot of hooks with the latest expo versions and we're gonna see this with the other libraries as well so we do have a video player, we can get the events and it is really a well thought out library that you can now use. Another new package is Expo Audio. This is actually currently in alpha or beta status, so it might change, but Expo Audio and Video is a replacement for the previous Expo AV audio video package. So they will get their dedicated packages. With the Expo Audio package, again, you can also create audio recorders using a hook. You can um, load these assets up front. I probably can't really show you this because it's just playing a sound. I could record something, um, but that's not too exciting. So check it out for yourself. Expo AV becomes Expo Audio and Expo Video in dedicated packages. Another new library is the Expo Live Photo library that allows you to use a live photo on iOS. So I could now from my image library pick a live photo like this and I could then on click get this cool live photo effect that you are used to from iOS. The code is also pretty easy as for the live photo you only need a photo URI and a paired video URI and then you get access to a nice live photo view component that you can include in your application. 
There's also a beta release of the Expo file system plugin, which has improved its API tremendously. So you can now use this synchronously for most operations. They're still reworking this. Be aware of this. This is currently in stages next, probably in the next SDK 53 Expo file system will be, or this new version will be the new stable version then. They also improved Expo camera, so you can get better performance now as they're using better Swift functionality under the hood of Expo camera. And this is certainly a great package as it also also allows to use a barcode scanner by now. The Expo image library got a cool update as we can now call something use image to preload an image into the memory of our application then render it when it's ready. I think this will be helpful for a lot of developers as well. Expo SQLite also got a couple of updates. It now supports SQL ciphers and it can also be saved to uh, shared containers on iOS. I also really like the usage of um, the provider. So there's a lot about Expo SQLite that we'll dive into in the future. And there's one like little gem here. That is, there's now a key value store included. So instead of using async storage, if your app is already using Expo SQLite, you can now import storage from Expo SQLite key value storage and just use that without bringing in another dependency. For all fans of background notifications, under the notifications library, there's an improved register task async functionality, which will allow you to hook into the background mode of your application. And now this has been challenging in the past and Expo is committed to improve the notifications library further in the future. So keep an eye on this and give the background notification and a task manager combination a try. The Expo Calendar got a nice new functionality called Create Event in Calendar Async, which now allows you to natively open this calendar view. Both iOS and Android are supported, and you will just get the native dialog to directly put something into the user's calendar. Something that will make Android people really happy is the Splash Screen API has improved a lot. Many bugs were fixed and there are in general new things. For example, you can now set a duration to make the Splash Screen fade out. So if your app has problems with the Splash Screen, check out the imported Expo, uh, the updated Expo Splash Screen library. And finally, we got Expo Fetch API. You might think, why do I need a new Fetch? Fetch is working, but in the API routes, you might encounter problems. And with the Expo Fetch API, you got now improved stability uh, in winter CG compliant uh, environments. So you can use something like streaming in your XPU API routes. Okay, after all the library updates, let's talk about some noteworthy changes. The first thing that I notice is that you can now have separate dark, light and tainted icons for iOS. So that means if you supply the right icons, you can now in effect get an effect like this. So on iOS, this is now supported. Uh, I can also use tinted here and then color this in whatever color it might. Of course, you need your icon to be um, correct for that. So it needs to be like a PNG that you can do it. By the way, this is called light by now. And I think the third one is tinted or yeah, it's tinted, not tainted. So set these three in the iOS um, key in your app JSON and you get nice cool icons. On top of that, there are a lot of improvements to the Expo CLI. The first that I see is universal tree sh uh, shaking support. This improves the web uh, performance and you can also enable the React compiler by now by setting it in your config. Besides that, there's a lot about like faster builds. You can also directly run an iOS binary now on your application, uh, on your device. Uh, the rest is just general improvements, uh, quality of life stuff. And then also regarding the Expo modules API, I haven't tried out all these things, but I think it's pretty cool that there's now enhanced support for shared objects, which is due to the new architecture and the synchronous way of how you can communicate between JavaScript and the native layer. So uh, a lot of these things will improve how we write Expo modules. And if you're interested in more about Expo modules, let me know in the comments and we will dive more into this in the future. One thing that probably stands out from Expo SDK 52 is DOM components. I talked about DOM components before, that's why I won't dive into the details. Uh, you can check out the video Expo DOM components are wild in which I explained why they are so great and how Expo DOM components can help you migrate your existing web code easily into a native application, like gradually adopt this new paradigm. It is pretty impressive what you can do with DOM components and we will certainly do a more uh, detailed view of this like transition from web to native because this is just really, really big. But for the moment, just 
I will leave it here, check it out, dump component, and you can see an example usage in my video. But you can of course now not only use it, but like installing a beta version, this is available with Expo SDK 52 and it's amazing. This release also includes Expo Router version 4. And Expo Router version 4 has some pretty interesting updates. Standing out is of course an early preview of React server components and server actions. Evan has demonstrated this at a couple of conferences and you can already check out the documentation. However, going through this, I found this quite challenging and I think right now the Expo launch week is happening and, Exp uh, and Evan is sharing like a real implementation of this. So we will all keep an eye on this. I don't really have a working uh, version of React Server components yet. This is super exciting, but we also need to be a bit careful because this is really an early preview and not meant for production. Besides that, Expo Router now uses React Navigation version 7, which just came out like two weeks ago. Um, you benefit from everything in React Navigation pretty much uh, without doing anything. The only breaking change is, as far as I know, uh, regarding Navigate. So. If you're using Navigate, this will not pop if you go to a previous screen. So you need to pop to that screen actually. Um, so if you're using and updating and notice something regarding your navigation, keep an eye on this. Besides that, there are uh, two more interesting things um, about Expo Router. So there's a new Expo Router UI and new Expo Router link. I actually haven't used that link component yet, but I tried Expo Router UI and it is interesting because this is pretty much a headless uh, or unstyled version of Expo Tabs. So I can now go to my tab. <laughs> I know what you're saying. Oh, Simon, this is so bad. What is this? Well, I wanted to make my point clear in what you can do. So here's a way of using tabs, tab slot, tab list, tab trigger from the Expo Router UI package. And I can now change between my tabs here in an unbelievable ugly way, but I am able to do it and I'm able to style it. You could also have something like a fixed header across your tabs, even if the tab changes. Again, implementation is interesting, but with a bit of native wind styling, I think we can do something pretty impressive. So if you're interested in styling and creating your own Expo tabs with these unstyled components, let me know in the comments. With every new version, there are some deprecations and breaking changes, although they're minimal. In terms of deprecations, the most noteworthy is regarding push notifications, which will no longer be supported in Expo Go for Android. So in general, you anyway want to move away from Expo Go. I will come back to this in the end. I think I said it in the last SDK as well, because the same story is true for Google Maps will no longer be supported in Expo Go for Android. Just make sure you are using pre-built and you're getting your systems ready to use pre-built. Expo Go is really meant for sharing like a quick preview. On top of that, this is also a breaking change because Expo Go now uses the new architecture for all apps. So if you're trying to like demo some old apps, they will probably not work anymore. On top of that, some of the packages that were at, uh, marked as legacy has now been removed. So Expo Camera and SQLite, they are now uh, the default. And as I mentioned before, Expo Barcode Scanner has been removed in favor of just using the Expo Camera package. It works pretty great and it has a pretty nice uh, iOS data scanner view control, which I'm using in my own quick track calorie tracking application right now. And of course, as mentioned before, the Expo Router function for navigation slightly changed due to the changes of React Navigation version 7. If you're now eager to upgrade, check out the upgrading your app section. Uh, you can basically just run NPX Expo install with the latest version and then follow this up with the Expo Doctor command, which hopefully solves all the problems. It is definitely a lot easier than updating React Native versions was in the past if you're using the like the community CLI. So this is a huge advantage you get by using Expo. Speaking of benefits that you get when using Expo, I got the benefit of testing something new. So there's one more thing I wanted to show you that's not included in the SDK changelog and that is a new feature called workflows. So in your Expo application, if you're using the Expo platform for building your applications, you can now create workflow files. If you're already using some sort of CI CD system, you might not know these. And if you look at this, this looks pretty familiar to what you might use. So I've created an EAS workflows folder and created one file for my new workflow. Um, I just tried a few dummy things in here. 
I got a quick intro to it through a file and then just gave it a try. I then synced my uh, Expo application with GitHub and made sure everything's included. And once you did this, you will see that your application now shows workflows. So in my workflow, I got this one here, release iOS app. It of course failed because I probably did something dump in here. Um, but I already see the logs waiting to start, spin up development and echo. I echoed this, hey, React Native devs right here in my first step. So. Uh, I don't know why the second step to build and submit the app didn't run, but you can imagine that you can do pretty interesting things with workflows. And right now, as the Expo launch week takes place, they're announcing this new functionality in, I uh, think, an early preview. If you're a team, if you're using EAS to build your applications and you probably like mangled around with other CI CD systems, this might be a better solution because workflows, I, will, I quote this now, workflows help you get common tasks done quickly by pre-packaging the most essential types of jobs for app developers. So with other CI CD solutions, you get like everything, but with workflows, you get really the stuff that's important to an Expo application, like building, submitting, um, running maestro tests or anything like that. So I think in the future, many companies might shift to this workflow as it's a lot more specialized and focused on the needs of React Native developers. Okay, I think that sums up most of the important changes, but I'm sure there are some like smaller pieces and nuggets that might be relevant for you. So check out the full changelog, link is in the description. Now, Expo SDK 52 is here. What is coming up next? Um, I predict that we will soon see stable release of RSC, probably something regarding Expo router and universal stuff, and maybe better local first support or more Expo Dev2 plugins. I don't know, uh, it's exciting. And let me know what's your favorite new feature and what you hope to see in the next SDK. But really, do we need anything else at the moment? I think it's just time to build epic apps with React Native. And if you need support while doing so, check out galaxies.dev and enjoy our fast paced courses, just like this video, practical projects and the personal support. Finally, if you're now leaving Expo Go behind, check out my video on pre-build and all the ways how you can build your app with Expo locally and using EAS and Android Studio and whatnot. So I will catch you in the next one. And until then, happy coding, Simon. <laughs>